This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the HP Split X2. Two pieces, Split X2, get it? Snaps right in, a lot like the HP Envy X2 becomes a notebook. What's so cool about this thing? It's affordable, relatively speaking. So far, these kinds of hybrids and transformers and two-piece devices that turn into a notebook, then into a standalone full Windows tablet, not RT, not even 32-bit Atom, have been expensive. This one you can get at Best Buy for $6.99. We're going to look at it now. Here it is, the HP Split X2, finally here. I know some of you have been asking for this review for a while. It's finally out there in stores now, available to buy. And uh, let's put it this way. Do you remember the ASUS Transformer Book TX300 we reviewed several months ago? A lot of you were really interested in that, but you wanted to see what the Split X2 would offer. And now that it's here, I can tell you it's a lot of bang for the buck. It's oh, almost half the price if you get the Best Buy version. From, compared to the TX300, but it's also sort of the poor man's TX300. It's an interesting world where now HP tends to make the, the mid-tier and the lower-tier products, and ASUS is making the high-line, really fancy, innovative products. So you're not going to get cutting-edge stuff here, but you're going to get some good value for your money, particularly in this form factor. As noted, it's a hybrid. And it's reminding me that I should undock this first if I wish to move it around. We have here a 13.3 inch tablet running full Windows 8 64 bit on Intel Core CPUs, and obviously we have a separate keyboard dock. Now, usually things like this are $1,000 and up, somewhere between $1,000 and closer to $1,500 usually. So, what's neat about this, $699 at Best Buy right now, $750 on HP's website for a slightly even lesser configured model. So, that one's not as much of a good buy unless you find one of HP sales. And that's one thing about HP. Often when they're giving one of their retail partners a, a little leg up there, an exclusive kind of thing, they'll often sell something kind of high on their website. But they also do have very aggressive sales. So if you're interested in a higher configuration of this than the one Best Buy offers, do keep an eye on their website and look for some of those sales. Inside we do have third generation Intel Core CPUs. Sorry, it's not Haswell yet. And, you know, HP has been a little slow getting to Haswell, but we're not going to pick on them too much in this case because this uses Haswell Y-series CPUs. These are the even more low-powered version of the CPUs, lower power than what's usually used in your average Ultrabook, and those are only starting to ship just now to manufacturers, so there's no way they could have come out with this product unless they went with third generation. The Best Buy edition here has a Core i3. Dash 3229Y. That's 1.4 gigahertz. And as you can see right here, we have a very minimal set of ports. This is mostly for the docking connectors. Every bit as good as the HP Envy X2. That was the Intel Atom version of this guy that came out of oh, almost a year ago now. That it was very nice. A micro SD card slot here. That's where we plug in our power. And we have a headphone jack. And that's it for the ports on the tablet. On the back here we have genuine plastic gray, not nearly as beautiful as the HP Envy X2 that inspired this whole design. has really worked out well for HP. I think the Envy X2 is very well received. That one was really nice metal casing. It also had an IPS display. We're not going to get as fancy a display on this guy here, but again, this is budget pricing. Remember, this costs about as much as the Envy X2 with an Atom cost when it came out, but you get a lot more power here and a bigger unit and some more features. Here, this is ventilation right here, and you will always hear the fan on this, I know. It's not roaring, but you'll always hear it running, which is a little bit surprising. A Y-series CPU should be cooler and quieter. That's a 13-watt CPU that can also chug along nicely at 7 watts to save power. Like the other Envy's and some other HP products recently, the buttons are on the back. That's our power button. This is our volume control. The idea is when you're holding it like that, your hands are on those buttons. I'm not sure if I'm still in love with that yet, but I can live with it. Weighs 2 pounds 5 ounces according to our scale, so about ballpark, typically speaking, for a Windows tablet, especially again 13.3 inches. So we're not talking one of those little 10 inch models here. This is the size of an Ultrabook. On our very glary front view right here, you can see we have a 1366 by 768 display. Before you guys start saying, oh my god, it's not full HD, I hate it, I don't know. Remember, this is not for somebody who has a lot of money to spend on high-end stuff. And that said, the display is not bad. It's not real bright, 150 nits of maximum brightness. It, it's suitable for indoor work, it's fine. Outdoor work's going to be a problem, especially given, again, that glare that you're seeing right there. But contrast is reasonably good on this one. We measured 300, 400 to 1, rather, for a contrast ratio. It's not up there with 1,000 to 1 on the best displays, but that's 
pretty tolerable looking. Color saturation is not too bad for a mid-priced item like this, 68% of sRGB. Uh, for most home users, that's going to be fine. I'll say if you're watching movies, I was watching Down Abbey, which has so many saturated colors, beautiful gold wallpaper, the green, green grass. It doesn't look quite as pretty on this as it does if you're using a Sony Vio Duo 13 that costs, again, about twice as much, so there it is. Much nicer display than the Samsung Ative Book 5 that we recently reviewed. That one is a touchscreen Ultrabook. Definitely much improved contrast, pretty easy on the eyes. Again, colors are reasonably good. Our pretty desktop looks nice and sharp. Viewing angles are not superb. It's a little hard to tell right now because glare is going to factor in it, so we're having a little hard time showing you that. But the viewing angles are not atrocious either. Again, certainly better than the more budget price ultra books like the Lenovo U310 Touch and the Samsung T Book 5, which is a good thing because when you're using a tablet, you know, you tend to move it around and hold it at odder angles. You don't really want it to disappear from view. So it's a it's a mid-quality display for the price of this package. I'm not going to complain at all. It's it's nice to use. I think most people are going to look at it and say, oh, that's pretty nice. Right here we have a capacitive Windows button. The, the nice thing is, though, it's capacitive, so it might be easy to touch accidentally. It's one of those where you press and hold for a moment. So if you just casually do this, you're not going to accidentally go back and forth until you keep your finger on it. If you keep it long enough like I just did, then it's going to have an effect. But just like that, quick tap, no. So that's that's good design right there. We have our webcam up front. We have built-in microphones with this, just as you'd expect from a tablet. And on the base, and by the way, these come together. There's no having to pay separately for your keyboard dock, which is nice. This weighs a little bit more than the tablet. This weighs two pounds, eight and a half ounces, com uh, according to our scale. So it's always good to have the base be a little bit heavier, heavier so you don't have something that's top heavy. Obviously, 13.3 inch, just the same size as an Ultrabook, so you have a nice roomy keyboard here. Nice white masking on black keys. This is not a backlit keyboard. Usually these detachable models are not. Pretty rare to see them being detachable. The keyboard's good. Not a super duper amount of travel. You can see right there they were trying to keep it thin. So, But it's not bad either. A little bit rattly sounding. But it's, it's perfectly pleasant to type on. There, there's a little bit of travel if you press down here. But nothing too much. It's fairly solidly built. Especially given the price. Trackpad here is pretty nice and large, a little cutout over there so you can feel where your hand is supposed to be. It actually works pretty well even for multi-touch. The only complaint I have is that it tends to pick up edge touches a lot and think you're doing the application switching in Windows 8, which can drive you crazy. You're actually swiping in your apps in and out. Only complaint on that front. Inside of here, there's a battery, just like in the tablet. Both the battery and the tablet each have a three cell, 33 watt hour battery inside. So again, a lot of similarity to the TX300, just a lower feature level going on here. We have a USB 2.0 port, our headphone jack right here, full size SD card slot. On this side, we have a USB 3.0 port, full size HDMI, and there's our charging port with a little LED to let you know that it's charging. And this is one sturdy hinge up here. Again, very similar to the HP NVX2, which is one of the best slider mechanisms we've seen. I'll show it to you what it looks like from the back. We have the docking connector right here. We have two nice metal prongs that go into the tablet and a single slider latch release. It's really easy to use. It's nicely done, feels solid. This whole thing actually feels pretty solid. Now, optionally, you won't get this on the Best Buy version that's on permasale, it seems, for $6.99. You can get this with a secondary hard drive in here. That's a spinning conventional 2.5-inch SATA 5400 RPM hard drive, 500 gigs, so that's nice. That's why you were seeing that warning on screen that tells you to undock it from the base before detaching, just in case it actually was a hard drive in here that was in use. You can obviously ignore that and tell it to never tell you about it again if you don't get the version with a hard drive in here. There are a bunch of... Phillips head screws here, and there's two, one under each of these feet. If you want to take this apart yourself, you can. So you get the version without a hard drive, you want to add it. You could do that. The thing is that this is a fairly plasticky thing, and it's not the easiest to pry apart. So this is not for the faint of heart. It's not like undo a couple of screws and magically smoothly opens up. It's going to take some prying and using a credit card, sticking it in there, and trying to get it open. To dock these two together, it's as simple as just taking this and dropping it right in. Just like that. Easy. No futzing, no mussing, no bizarre look. The only thing that you could say is perhaps slightly bizarre is the way HP does the top here. 
because the hinge has to stick out somewhere. Same way again, they did it with the NVX2. I don't have a problem with it. Together, these guys weigh almost five pounds. This is not light. The ASUS Transformer Book TX300 also is not light. Once you get into these separal, separable designs, especially if you're making a fairly strong quality product here, they're not going to be light. But that's on the heavy side for a 13.3 inch. We measured together as about 4.8 pounds. HP quotes almost 5 pounds. I think they're accounting it with the optional hard drive in the base, probably. You can see there's more rubber feet over here so that when you stand the laptop up, it's resting on against those rubber feet, as well as the rubber feet that are on the base. And they are very grippy. Boy, this thing just does not want to move. It really is the most stable thing I've ever felt on the table. Obviously, your ventilation is up here, so it's unlikely you're going to block it when you're using it in laptop mode. That's a good thing. And from the side, well, it starts to look like just any old laptop that you've ever seen, doesn't it? Or Ultrabook. Not a bad looking piece at all. Uh, that's what it looks like closed and all together. So what do you get for your $699? Well, obviously you get the top, you get the bottom, you get the entire computer. You get a fairly compact charger. I'll bring that in right now so you can see it. Certainly not going to weigh you down. Standard laptop style charger. It has single band Wi-Fi, 802.11bgn. We really wish it had dual band. Even at that price it would be nice to have, but well, it doesn't. It has Bluetooth 4.0. You can get it with 4 gigs of RAM or 8 gigs of RAM. The Best Buy version is 4 gigs of RAM. Now inside here, there's supposed to be a single RAM slot in the tablet section, because really all the brains are in the tablet section. This base is just a dock with an optional secondary hard drive. It has an SSD inside. We like that for the price. That really makes a difference in perceived performance. The applications just launch very quickly. There's no waiting around. Benchmarks pretty well. Ours happens to be a Samsung hard drive in there, or a SSD drive, and they make good SSDs, so I'm not complaining there. And the Best Buy, as I mentioned, version has a Core i3 that's 1.4 gigahertz. Now, the bad thing about a Core i3 is there's no turbo boost, so you don't get that little extra oomph when an application really needs it. That said, this is perfectly fine for working at MS Office, doing your social networking, having a web browser open with like 10 tabs or so, no problem there. You can even do some Photoshop on this. Uh, you could do some HD video editing. Export times will not be rocket quick exactly, but if you're just doing that casually for your own fun videos that you've shot, it would be fine. I would not buy this for computationally demanding tasks. If you're do, doing software compiling, that kind of thing, I would not get the i3 version. If you're doing a lot of HD video editing, no. If you're really into games, again, no, not so much. It's not like an Intel Atom where, forget, you're not going to play any Windows games, really. You can certainly play the Windows Store games and older PC games on this as well. I mean, you know, Rise of Nations, things from about three years ago, that'll work because we, we have Intel HD 4000 integrated graphics here. Now, optionally, you can get the Core i5. That's still a Y series. That goes up to 1.5 gigahertz, but that will get you turbo boost to 2 gigahertz. So you got a little bit more processing power. So for those of you who need that, consider it. HP charges $100 extra for that, but their base price is also higher again, as I mentioned on their website. So we'll have to wait for some price drops or for some sales on that. In terms of benchmarks, you can see what our Windows Experience Index is like here. 5.5 for a processor. Now, usually with a full Ultrabook Core i5, we would see something like 6.9. So you can see the difference in that score right there. Memory is 5.9. We can tell you that's single channel RAM. There's only one RAM slot for that, so they can't do dual channel easily. Desktop graphics, 4.5. 3D gaming graphics, 6.0. That's not too bad, actually especially since we don't have dual channel memory here, and 7.9 for the SSD drive. So decent but not stunning numbers there. In PC Mark 7, which loves SSD drive, so it's going to do pretty decently, we got a score of 3,054. Now the top Ultrabooks are usually around 4,500 or so, so a bit slower there because we have the single core i3 going. W Prime, 38.2 seconds to compute Pi. Geekbench 2, for the 64-bit test, we got a score of 4136, not too, too bad, and 3803 for the 32-bit test. The Split X2 does not run too hot. Now, obviously, the heat's going to be in the back over here behind the screen, and sometimes on tablets you can even feel it in the screen. This screen does not get hot, but all the processor and everything is in this section right here. Haven't had any problems with it getting hot. Like I said, the fan, you'll always hear it. Now, if you're doing something like 
well, playing Rise of Nations or even trying to play a little Civ, you can play it at native resolution pretty passably, Civ 5 that is, uh, you'll hear that fan, boy, it will start to work. The good news is if you detach this from the base, sometimes with these hybrids, they, they just go into low power mode and they won't run at full clock speed. It will continue to run at full clock speed if you're using just the tablet alone, so you don't have to have it docked to get all the horsepower. Again, this is full Windows 64 bit, so anything you can do with the Windows PC, you can do with this. Right now we're using the Metro UI version of IE10, and we're going to play a video just to see how it looks and plays on screen, and we'll look at our Droid Razor Max video review. Touchscreen's quite responsive, absolutely no complaints there. Zooming is good. Text sharpness, well, it's, it's just standard HD resolution, so you're not going to get ultra-sharp text like you do on the full HD models. Again you know, you're not paying that much either, are you? There's certainly enough contrast here. You can see the text is easy to read on a white background. Pinch zooming is responsive, and let's check out our video. Right what you're here. listening now are so-called Beats audio speakers. Storage. They're down here. The Droid Max. Well, if you've watched our video review it's not bad, right? You know pretty much everything you need to know for a hybrid Max, tablet at this price? Feature in detail because you now those speakers, you know, take the Beats audio label with a grain of salt right there. For, for a 13-inch notebook or even more so for a tablet because the speakers are in the tablet section. You don't have the base to work with here for audio. That's not too bad. It's fairly full. It's not too, too tinny, but it's not awesome either. For a tablet, it's pretty good. For an Ultrabook, it's average. Now out of the box are 128 gig SSD, and that's the capacity you're going to get in the Best Buy edition of this had 75 gigs free. There's a recovery partition on here, which is actually visible in Windows. That's pretty unusual these days if you're using the file manager. And after installing all of our Windows updates and things, we were at about 67 gigs free, which is about par for the course for any Ultrabook that comes with 128 gig SSD. HP likes to toss on some bloat right here. We've got Box, we've got eBay preloaded, but a lot of these things are just shortcuts to web services. So not all of it's taking up a whole lot of space. They do include Norton Internet Security Trial, which I removed and just went with Windows Security Essentials to lighten the load on the CPU. Kindle's preloaded, obviously, here. Some games, the usual HP photo services kind of stuff that's bundled on the desktop. We've got our Snapfish right there. They always have cozy family calendar installed, but most of those, again, are web shortcuts, and you can get rid of those if you have no use for them whatsoever. Battery life on this HP claims up to 10 and a half hours on charge. That would be pretty good, wouldn't it? Well, uh, so far with normal use with Wi-Fi on and brightness set most of the way up because honestly this is not the, the brightest of machines uh, we're not seeing that much and that's a quoted battery time for the bottom and the top together which means two three cell batteries in use at once it's more like six and a half hours or so of battery life which isn't too bad it's competitive with other ultrabooks the whole purpose of the Y series CPU was supposed to be to get us cooler temperatures and longer battery life but it never really seemed to do that at least not Ivy Bridge we'll see how it does in Haswell uh, and with Haswell, CPU is out now in the ULT, which is a new word for ULV CPUs in old standard Ultrabooks. Those are getting about the same run times already, so that makes this battery life competitive, but not impressive compared to those whatsoever. Now, if you're just using the tablet by itself, you can do the math. You can t tell that it's going to be about half of that runtime. Now you can be a little conservative. Say you set brightness down to half, you turn off your Bluetooth, still using Wi-Fi. If you're using power management aggressively, you can get about four hours out of the tablet section just by itself. Again, you're looking at something that is more desktop performance. This is not a mobile OS tablet, so it's not going to run forever. It's not an Intel Atom, which of course is much slower, but also has longer battery life. So the nice thing about the HP Split X2 is this is what we really were hoping for, isn't it? When Windows 8 first came out and we had these neat hybrid designs and stuff, and all of them cost just so much money, pricing a lot of people out of the market. I don't think in all cases people are so d discouraged by Windows 8, but they're more discouraged by the pricing. Finally, we're starting to see things that are ballpark affordable and comparable to some standard design laptop, and that's what we get right here. So. I applaud the, the X2 for that. Really, it's, it's again a lot of bang for the buck. It's for those of you who are looking for a hybrid design. You sometimes want to use it as a tablet. You just want to hold this 
sit on surf on the couch, maybe watch a video somewhere. You don't always need your keyboard, but sometimes you do, and you do do typing as well. There it is. It's great. It's affordable. It works well. It's solidly put together. It doesn't have the best display on the market. It doesn't have an aluminum casing. It doesn't have all those things that are going to cost you $1,500 right now, but honestly, it gets the job done. Unless you need a whole lot of computing power, which this guy, you know, is a i3 isn't going to give you a Y series CPU again. This is a lot like the Lenovo Yoga 11S Y series CPU here. This is for everyday computing. This isn't for somebody who has super demanding tasks, but certainly it's way more powerful than the HP Envy X2 and all of the Atom tablets that are on the market, and the price isn't that much different. So that's the HP Split X2. It's available now. You find it's exclusive in the U.S. at Best Buy if you want to find it in a bricks and mortar store, or you can order from HP Direct. Uh, as I mentioned, though, HP's price on their website's a little bit high, so you've got to wait for one of their sales. They often have those. Hopefully, they'll find one soon. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.